Hey everybody, today I'm going to be discussing the Colombia vs. Japan match and I'm going to focus in particular on the two big incidents that happened in the game. The first one being the penalty and the red card against Colombia and the second one is going to be the foul that led to Colombia's goal and the free kick. Um, so, let's talk about the first incident. Was it a red card or not for Carlos Sanchez? So, since it's a really difficult topic and a lot of people disagree on it I've decided to divide it to divide it into four different scenarios because I think you can't just put it all into one bracket because there's too many different variables that come into play so I'm gonna talk about four scenarios and the Columbia game is gonna fall into one of those scenarios so for me the first scenario is the player is one-on-one -on -one of the keeper he dribbles around him he passes him but the keeper brings him down before he's able to shoot it into the back of the net. For me, that's a red card because he's denying a clear goal scoring opportunity. And 99% of the time, the player's going to pass it into the back of the net and score a goal. We've seen Fernando Torres miss a really big chance against uh, for Chelsea once, but I mean, players hit it in the back of the net 99% of the time. So, that's the first scenario, and that should be a red card and a penalty. Then, second scenario the player beats the goalkeeper. And his shot is directed towards goal, but a player clears the ball off the line, or before the line, doesn't matter, if it was heading into the goal. But the ball has to be going into the net. So, for example, a good example of this is uh, Luis Suarez against Ghana in 2010, when he kind of like pushes the ball back, although it was going in. So, for me, that's a penalty and a red card, because the ball was going into the net 100%. Like, the, the goal was going to happen. So for me, that's, there's no debate there. You can't just like take away a goal that was actually like going into the net and not expect to not get a red card. I mean, it's, it's, that's a red card every day of the week. Uh, then there's another circumstance where the player, so this is the third scenario now, the player's through on goal, but the, the defender tackles the attacker right before he's able to go one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. For me, that's a yellow card and a penalty because you do not know if a player was going to hit the ball into the back of the net or if the keeper is going to save it. So it's an unclear situation. Was there going to be a goal or is there not going to be a goal? We're not sure. In the two previous scenarios, we knew the ball was going to go in the back of the net. So for me, in this, in this situation, it's a yellow card because we're giving a penalty right afterwards, which is going to, which is kind of like, so you're getting the opportunity back as the offensive team. But where I think a new card should be added, and this is like, I mean, this hasn't happened in football forever, and it's never happened, so it'd be interesting to put this into play now. But I think an orange, an orange card or something like that could be interesting, where in addition to giving a penalty, you give like an, an orange card where the player who fouls the, the attacker has to go off for like 20 minutes. So it would be kind of like in hockey where a a team is on the power play so you foul to prevent a goal but as a punishment the opposite team gets a certain amount of time where we can like you know put pressure on your goal and because of your mistake so that would be uh, the punishment and I think that's actually a pretty good idea and I think we should see more of it because I think it's it doesn't change the whole game because it's only for a certain amount of time that the team would be at playing with 10 men um, and then the player can come back on once um, the 20 minutes are over. So that's a good idea. The fourth scenario, which I think the Japan vs. Colombia game falls under, is this one. The player beats the keeper and then shoots it on goal, but it's off target. In that, in that scenario, well, the guy missed the net, so it should be a yellow card. It should only be a yellow card and a penalty. But at times, we're not going to be sure. Like in this case, if it goes above the goal, if it's going to go in the goal, it's unclear. But the referee, for me, cannot guess in this in this circumstance, and he can't just guess that it was going in and he's going to give a red card. For me, that's you can't referee based on a guess. You have to have clear evidence. Um, so for me, this game, Nag uh, Kagawa hits it, but for me, it rises very quickly, his shot. So I think it was going to go over. So for me, the right call would have been a yellow card. Um... I know in cricket they have this uh, ball trajectory projection where they can see if a ball was gonna hand, was gonna land, either on the wicket or not, depending on on the um, on how the ball was thrown. 
and at which angle it hit the floor. So I'm not sure if in, in football they would be able to implement that technology. But if they could, it would be very interesting. I know this doesn't happen a lot, uh, often, but when it does happen, it's always a gray area because we never know what the right call should be. So for me, um, the Colombia versus Japan game fell, fell under this category. And it should have been a yellow card and a penalty. But you can't blame the referee for giving a red card because there's no clear rule. They said they are going to abolish it last year in the Premier League, but we still saw some red cards. So there has to be consistency. 